What if I told you your weeds are trying to help, not just annoy you, but actually give you clues about what's going wrong with your soil? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to read your weeds so that you can work with your garden, not against it. So we'll cover some practical responses to weed pressure and a technique for using weeds to enhance your garden soil and your growing capacity at no extra cost to you. So welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Taylor and I help people like you grow a more resilient, self-sufficient garden the right way without spending tons of money in the process. A lot of the processes that we talk about on this channel are completely free. And speaking of free, if you haven't grabbed our easy natural liquid fertilizer PDF, check the link in the description. This fertilizer is both a solution to your weed problems and made out of them. Which brings us to what weeds actually are. If you look at nature, very few spaces allow bare soil. Often you've got trees dropping leaves or needles. Plants go to seed and then they self-mulch their seed after it's been dropped. And the reason that nature mulches itself is because it's in everyone's best interest. Bare soil is prone to drying out, eroding, surface cracking, compaction, none of which are beneficial to plants growing except for weeds. Weeds, at least many of them, are plants that have adapted to grow in areas with little competition from other plants. They often thrive in conditions that other plants might struggle. Weeds are kind of like the Earth's self-defense mechanism, like a band-aid. They move in when the soil is bare, compacted, imbalanced, or struggling to hold nutrients. So dandelions, for example, often signal that soil is compacted or soil that's low in calcium. Purslane shows up in recently disturbed soil and loves bare patches. Thistles thrive in acidic low fertility soils. Chickweed tends to take over in areas with high nitrogen, often overwork beds. The point is weeds are messengers. They pop in to certain conditions for a reason. And if you pay attention, they'll hypothetically give you a pretty good read on your soil health. Of course, this isn't an exact science. Not all weeds are there only because your soil is imbalanced in specific ways. But many weeds perform a function known as remineralization, meaning that they send their roots deep into the soil or they spread out far and wide in order to pick up the nutrients locked in the lower, lower levels or in the upper layers where the nutrients aren't otherwise readily available to other plants. Weeds are actually oftentimes doing something other plants can't. They're finding a way to access the nutrients that are out of reach. And that said, what are we supposed to do once we get the message that our soil is in trouble? Well, you could ignore it and just rip out the weeds in a fury and try and move on with your life. But as you probably know, if you're watching this video, that's far from a sustainable approach. The first thing you actually need to do is to realize that as is the case for a lot of gardening hiccups, the problem actually indicates the solution. If your soil is bare, weeds are going to cover it. So you're more than welcome to rip out the weed, but if you want them gone for good, you need to remove them strategically and make changes that actually keep them from coming back. So for deeper tap roots like dock or dandelions tools, like the grandpa weeder are pretty effective for getting them out. You wanna try and get out as much of the root as possible, which is not really going to be possible if your soil is ultra compacted. But getting a lot of the root out will weaken the plant for a little while. For rhizomal weeds like perennial grasses and morning glory, you're in for a treat because any bit of root fragment will become a new plant. So regardless of what kind of weeds that you're dealing with, there's one thing that I can't recommend enough, and that is just to resist the urge to till. It might feel like the productive in the short term, because it clears out the weeds quickly, but it actually brings more weed seeds to the surface from lower levels where they were just lying in wait. So tillage may or may not need to say will also damage the soil structure in the long run, making it more hospitable to future weeds. If you happen to till a patch that contains some bits of rhizomal spreading weed, you're gonna be fighting that weed for a while because you effectively just chopped it up, put it in a bunch more places from which new plants can grow. So rather than tilling, if your soil is bare, I wanna just encourage you, is there a way that you could cover it so that your weeds don't have to? This is what we call mulch. Thick organic mulch won't wipe out every weed, but it will soften the soil. It'll help retain moisture and smother regrowth over time. So mulches like straw, hay, wood chips, and leaf mold can work as a weed suppressant, but you'll need to lay them on pretty thick and they won't ever fully eradicate the weeds probably. Mulches like compost can work if you're just trying to cover the weeds or and maybe start a new garden bed in that area. You need to cover them with at least six inches. Otherwise, you're just providing the weeds with a nice blanket. Cardboard is probably the most effective organic mulch for smothering weeds. And it's used 
largely as a weed barrier underneath wood chips or compost or another mulch. It doesn't compose too quickly, which means that weeds won't be able to permeate. They grow up, they hit the bottom of the cardboard, as they look for light, and they expend the energy stored in the root systems looking for that light. Here's an example of a part of our yard where we covered weeds with cardboard, and then we laid wood chips down on top. No weeds in sight. Now look over here and take a guess at what we put underneath the wood chips. Nothing. We ran out of cardboard. Lesson is we probably should have waited to get more cardboard <laughs> before spreading the wood chips because now we're gonna have to rake the wood chips back, lay down cardboard, and then rake the wood chips back on top. Here's the big picture. Healthy soil naturally resists weeds. If you've got a garden bed sitting empty, don't leave it bare. Throw down a mulch or better yet, a cover crop. It feeds the soil, holds structure, blocks weeds from moving in. Also, focus on fertility. Soil that is alive and well-fed is harder for aggressive weeds to take hold in. If all the nutrients that it needs are easily available in the upper layers of the soil, the weed will be just as easy to pull out as one of your veggies or flowers. One of the easiest and cheapest ways to boost soil biology is by using our Jadam microbial solution. It's a homemade inoculant that feeds your soil microbes and improves tilth fast. We've got a whole video on how to make it and use it. We'll link that if you wanna check that out. So let's go over this again. Weeds show up for a reason, and when the conditions improve, most of them will phase out on their own. Think of them like the first responders. They're not the villain. They're just showing up to stabilize a system that's out of balance. That said, once you tear them out, you don't toss them. Don't toss them just yet because a lot of weeds can be used. You can make JLF, Jadam Liquid Fertilizer, from basically every weed. It's free and it turns your garden problems into nutrient-rich tea. To make this easy liquid fertilizer, take your weeds. You don't need to worry about mixing and matching unless you want to. Put them in a bucket or a jar or whatever you feel like, letting it sit for a while and stinking really bad and then add some leaf mold soil from the forest. This is the soil found beneath the leaf litter of an undisturbed forest. A ton of beneficial native microbes are gonna be in the soil and they're gonna go to town on the weeds in the bucket. For a bucket, a handful of leaf mold soil works fine. For a smaller vessel, add a little less. Truthfully, the exact amount doesn't really matter too, too much because it's more of a starter culture than the actual nutrient. Once you've got your weeds and your leaf mold soil in the bucket, fill it up with dechlorinated water until the weeds are just covered with water. You can weigh them down with a rock or a brick or something. If possible, try to keep these weeds fully submerged underwater. Then put on a lid and wait. If you wait a week in warm weather, the full heat of the summer, this stuff will be ready to strain and use as an all-purpose fertilizer. If you wait longer, the fertilizer will become more potent. I've got the rough breakdown for time spent brewing to how strong it is on our PDF recipe. But basically, as it brews longer, it grows stronger and needs to be diluted at a higher and higher rate. In other words, it goes a lot further. You can ferment this stuff for as long as you want, years even, but keep in mind that for the first six months especially, this stuff is gonna stink horrendously. Use gloves when you handle it because it'll make your skin stink. However, it is very effective as a fertilizer and it pairs great with a Jadam microbial solution that I mentioned earlier. We'll drop a link to that recipe as well in the description. So next time your weeds are taking over, don't just pull them, pay attention. They're saying something about your soil. If you wanna try making your own weeds-based fertilizer, we've got the free recipe download linked in the description. And if you're ready to dive deeper into homemade fertilizers that actually work, check out our natural fertilizer mini course video here. It will help you stop buying bags of stuff from the store and you actually start building long-term fertility right at home. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.